If you pay close enough attention to cancel culture and the hate mobs, you'll see that they don't actually know what they want. They claim that they want accountability and they want justice, but that's clearly not the case. I'm Alex recently made a public as well as a private apology, which is what the hate mob demanded of him, but that wasn't good enough. The reality is that the hate mob doesn't actually want justice or accountability. They want blood. They don't want you to improve, they want you to suffer. What's really interesting is that there are even members of the mob who have been attacked multiple times before, and although they feel they deserve forgiveness, they lack the ability to give it to others. Throughout this video, I want you to ask yourself what the hate mob really wants, because it seems as though they won't be happy until you're off the platform or end your life. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I like to do is take different topics going on in the YouTube community and try to see what lessons we can pull from them to improve our own mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And yes, we are going to be talking about the I'm Alex situation, his apology, and cancel culture. And those of you who don't know, my brand new book, Cancelled, Inside YouTube Cancel Cancel Culture is out now. It is free. So go check out the description, check out the pinned comment down below, go download yourself a copy. Like, Cancel Culture is absolutely brutal and that's what we're gonna be talking about in this video. But anyways, I have been recording the audiobook, okay? I've been busting my butt to record the audiobook. I'm hoping it'll be out this week. The audiobook will be $10, but for anybody who does the $5 suggested donation of the ebook, you'll get the audiobook for free. So it's like half off. Pretty cool, right? And to be honest, I'd be really appreciative if you downloaded the $5 version because YouTube has been demonetizing my videos like a mother. But anyways, let's jump into this video. For weeks, the hate mob has been demanding an apology from I'm Alex. They've said that this was all they wanted and then all would be right in the universe. Once Alex released this apology, they removed the gun from his head and let him live his life in peace. The other day, on July 28th, Alex came out with his apology, and here's what it said. Recently, I spoke to Slazo and discussed, as well as apologized for my support of Shay's original post and the way I handled the accusations that had been put forward. I came to the conclusion I had through multiple friends of mine reinforcing stories, as well as multiple other people coming forward privately with their own personal situations involving Slazo, which under the pretext I fully believed at the time. I should have waited for both sides of the story and regret supporting the post without having all the information and hearing Slazo's side. I have spoken to him since and apologized for jumping the gun no matter how damning I believed the evidence was. It was a mistake to support the post as no matter how much I believe that the allegations were true, it does not excuse the fact that it should have been given to the correct authorities to deal with properly and privately. I regret giving my personal opinion on the situation as it was not necessary. I did so because I felt responsible as a friend of those involved, but also as a friend of Slazo to not support the behavior he had been accused of as I fully believed that it was completely true at the time. Regarding me doubling down, I very much believed a lot of the stories I had been given from multiple other people, which is why I wasn't quick to dismiss the alleged victims that had approached me. Although that doesn't excuse my rash responses and poor handling of a very delicate situation. I understand that people are upset with my lack of a response, but I have personally taken my time to respond due to recent events and constantly developing situations that have been happening privately. I remove my post regarding the situation as I can no longer stand behind them, nor do I I believe in them anymore based off new information that I have been given. Any person with an ounce of logic or rationality in their body will look at that apology and want to move on. A rational person would see that not only did Alex apologize to the community, but he also apologized to the guy the hate mob claims to be defending. 
You'd figure that if the guy the hate mob was defending forgave Alex, the mob should forgive Alex too. After this apology came out, one would think that balance has been restored and we can all hold hands and rejoice. But if that's what you thought, you clearly don't understand how cancel culture works. Cancel culture holds you hostage and makes demands like a terrorist saying that all they want is a plane and $1 million. Once you meet their demands, they'll let everybody live. But when you deliver the ransom, they proceed to massacre the hostages anyways. What you're seeing happen to Alex is the epitome of cancel culture. And it's what I discuss extensively in my new book. You can't win and the mob won't be pleased until you're off the platform for good. You may try to appease the mob, but they'll still come at you in full force. When you're attacked by cancel culture, you're walking through a minefield where every step will get you blown up. They demand an apology, but once you apologize, they pick it apart and say that it's fake. These people either lack self-awareness or refuse to admit that no apology will ever be good enough for them. They can't admit to themselves or others that it's completely irrational that just because you don't like an apology doesn't mean that it wasn't sincere. Have you ever had someone in your life who has that insane ability to complain about literally everything? You can be out with them during a beautiful day at the park, but they'll say that the sun's too bright or the sound of children laughing and playing is annoying. These are the type of people that you know will never be satisfied with life and are perpetually miserable. And that's what cancel culture is like. They want to complain and need to complain. It seems as though if they attempted to practice empathy, forgiveness, and kindness, they may spontaneously combust. During the I'm Alex hatred, you have a lot of kids in the commentary community trying to make a name for themselves by attempting to ruin Alex's career. These are kids who don't have much life experience, maybe loners in the real world, and now they use YouTube as an outlet to complain about the world. Because of their age and lack of life experience, you can't really get too upset with them. They've had a taste of some attention and popularity and their young minds are getting flooded with dopamine, so they want more. These kids are going to try to continue to play the morality police on YouTube in an effort to get views, likes, and subscribers, but maybe they'll grow up someday. But if you want an example of a grown man who has somehow managed to survive by dodging life lessons like the Matrix, you need look no further than King Keemstar. Based on Keemstar's past as well as recent events, you would think that this man would have developed some empathy and compassion, but that's not the case at all. As someone who has had the hate mob come after him multiple times and still has his past held over his head and begs people to stop, you'd think Keemstar would know better. Most of us who have been attacked by the hate mob wouldn't wish it on our worst enemy, but Keemstar is different. He went through it and he wants everyone to go through it too. What you need to know about Keemstar is that his problem with Alex isn't about the Slazo situation. It's about an old grudge that Keem can't let go of. Keemstar has attempted to create the narrative that this is about Alex falsely accusing Slazo, but if you listen to the baited podcast, you know that's not true. See, what everyone in the YouTube community knows is that this exact same situation happened to Keemstar, and years later, he still has it thrown in his face. Keemstar falsely accused a man of being a pedophile on his platform, which isn't much different than what Alex did to Slazo, and some would even say that it's worse. Years later, Keemstar expects forgiveness. He expects people to let it go because he apologized and even donated money to the man. He wants to be absolved of his false accusations against a man but he refuses to give it to someone else. While many of us develop more empathy when we've been through a situation ourselves, somehow Keemstar has managed to have less. What's even more interesting about Keemstar's lack of self-awareness and empathy is that he was just recently blamed for the death of Etika and the hate mob came after him again. Less than 24 hours after Etika was released from a psychiatric hospital, Keemstar interviewed and proceeded to taunt Etika on drama alert. Keemstar even made a comment to Etika about how Etika might as well jump off a cliff if this is all a simulation. About a month ago, 
After Etika uploaded a goodbye video to YouTube, we learned the tragic news that Etika ended his life by jumping off the Brooklyn Bridge. After this happened, Keemstar had the internet coming after him harder than ever before and blaming him for playing a role in Etika's suicide. Another creator by the name of Tumad even made a video about Keemstar's role in Etika's passing that amassed over half a million views. In the video, Tumat encouraged his audience to attack Keemstar on Twitter by spamming him with cricket emojis and Photoshop pictures of Keemstar as a cockroach. During this time, Keemstar begged and pleaded with the internet to stop. Keemstar even went as far to have Etika's mom send him a statement to try to get the hate mob to stop. In multiple Twitter videos, Keemstar was on the verge of tears as he tried to cope with a friend's suicide while the internet was attacking him. You would think that a man who has been the victim of the internet hate mob would have just a little compassion for Alex, but that's clearly not the case. At the end of the day, when you see someone being canceled, I want you to ask yourself what people like Keemstar and the rest of the commentary channels actually want. We've learned that although they make demands, they won't be satisfied with them. So what do they really want? Do they want people like I'm Alex deplatformed? Do they want him to get publicly stoned for his mistakes? Cancel culture doesn't want anything more than for people to suffer, and that's why it needs to end. All right, everybody, thanks for watching this video. I really want you to start looking at cancel culture and looking at the people involved in perpetuating these narratives and the hypocrisy and the lack of compassion and forgiveness, even though they want it for themselves. You know what I mean? Like something I talk about in the book is I want you to think about what you would want, what you would expect if you made a mistake like this, all right? Just have a little bit of empathy in these situations, okay? But yeah, anyways, don't forget, check out the link in the description below and the pinned comment. Go download your free copy of canceled and the audiobook will be out soon all right but anyways that's all i got for this video if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you're new make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell and a huge huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on patreon you are all amazing and thank you so much to everybody who's already donated to the cause and helping me spread this message to everybody out there on the internet all right thanks again for watching i'll see you next time